Um, before we get started, if you guys just want to uh, get up and wave to someone, uh, give a little fist bump, someone that you haven't seen in a while, maybe a little hug, whatever you're comfortable with. Awesome. Well, welcome to Calvary Chapel North Whittier. It's awesome to see some new faces this morning. Um, we welcome you. Uh, before we get into our worship, let's go ahead and uh, get into some prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you for um, bringing us here this morning. We know that us being here is just a part of your plan for us, Father, and we thank you for that. We pray um, that we would just praise you this morning with an open heart and an open mind, um, not thinking about what others are are thinking or are looking at, Lord, but just a, a pure relationship with you and us, Father. And we pray that um, we you would just welcome us into your throne room, Father, and we just give you praise this morning. We pray that these songs would just be an aroma um, of just splendor and, and grace and wonder, Lord, uh, to your name ultimately. We pray this now in Jesus' name, amen. You could all stand with us this morning. Let's put our hands together.
You guys are welcome to remain standing or have a seat. It's all a posture of the heart.
Amen. 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 Good morning, everybody. My name is Pastor Robert, and I uh, just want to welcome you to our Sunday morning service here at Calvary Chapel North Whittier for everyone in our main sanctuary, everyone watching on home and Facebook. We are so glad you have joined us. Just, uh, real quickly, as a reminder, I just want to remind everybody, we are asking everyone to wear your mask upon entering, fellowshipping, and walking around. Uh, but while you are seated during service, you can take your mask off. Uh, we also are asking everyone to continue social distancing, at least one or two chairs between families. Uh, and remember, the motivation behind these measures is not political, but out of love and concern for the Lord ch and his uh, church body. Uh, our servant team is praying and discussing making further transitions as the Lord leads. And we will definitely keep you posted as things may change. And now it's time for our responsive reading. So let's go ahead and get out our Bibles, our devices, our phones, our tablets. And while you have your phones out, it's a good time to put them on silent. And I'll explain how that works in just a minute. Let's turn to Psm 27. We're going to finish up from last weekend. It's going to be Psalm 27, verse 9 through 14. And how that works for our, our visitors and everyone new at home watching is I'm going to read aloud the odd number verses. And then you return and read aloud the even number verses. Uh, and it's Psalm 27, and we're going to finish up that psalm. It's nine, verses 9 through 14. And let's go ahead and stand for the reading of God's word. Verse 9. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Let's pray. Let's bow. Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning, Lord, and, and uh, we just thank you for your steadfast love and mercy. We thank you for sending your son to walk on this earth, to die on the cross for our sins, Lord. So we just go before you, and we all come into agreement, Lord, that we just ask for your forgiveness this morning. Forgive us of our sins, cleanse our hearts and our minds. Ready us for this morning, Heavenly Father. Prepare our hearts, prepare our minds. As Pastor Charlie gets ready to share as we finish up in praising and worship of you, Lord, we lift up this song to you, Heavenly Father. We just ask that you go before us. Flood this place with the Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father. We just ask that you anoint Pastor Charlie this morning, that many will hear this message that he has prepared. Not only here in the main sanctuary, but many watching at home, many will, all of them, Lord, will turn to your Son and pursue your Son, Heavenly Father, with all their hearts. So we just give you this morning, Heavenly Father, we ask that you go before us in the powerful name of Christ Jesus. We all say, Amen. And amen. Amen. Before we get into the song here, I just wanted to share a, a small word with you guys. Um, how many of you guys are going through any battle this morning? Any battle? Just, you know, just a, a rhetorical question. Um, you know, we all go through our battles and our struggles. It feels, it feels great when we can overcome a battle that, that we've been going through. And uh, I, just, I, I just wanted to share, you know, I, I, I had a small little battle last night, and I overcame it. And I just wanted just to share that when we overcome our battles and we overcome just the things that we're going through, the struggles of life, and we're able to overcome through God, it feels great. And whatever struggle you're going through this morning, whatever pain you may be going through this morning, if we just turn our face upon God, he can pull you through it. And 
whatever that may be, small or big, our God is great and he's able to overcome your fear, your sin, and anything that you're going through this morning. And there's power in the blood of Jesus, amen. And there's power in his name. He's great and he can move those mountains for you. Sin will just leave. Demons will flee. And before the name of God, he is able to set you free. As we sing this song this morning, just think about that battle that you've been going through, that you've been fighting over and over again. And you feel like you can't, you can't uh, escape it. But through the name of our God, you can. And you can be set free. And those chains can be loosed. As we sing this song out, just proud to our Father, he's here. He wants you, he, he wants to receive you as his. And we go through it, we're not perfect, but our God is. And he's here to hold you in his arms. And you are safe and secure in his arms.
mountains shake before me, the demons run and flee. At the mention of the name, King of Majesty, there is no power in hell, nor any who can stand before the power of the to the beginning, Father. We can't go back to where we were, God. I can't turn back to my sin. My eyes need to be upon you, God. And I can't do it alone, Jesus. I need your help, Lord. You make me strong and mighty, God. I may be going through it, God, but I am strong through you and through your blood. God, you strengthen me, Jesus. It's your blood that runs through my veins, God. You make me whole. You make me complete, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your blood, God. Thank you for your love. You are the great I am, Jesus. You are the living God. Go before us now, Jesus. Go before us now. It's good when heaven comes down to earth a little bit, isn't it? You know, when we get to heaven, you think it's going to be really quiet and really... I got, I got news for you. There's rejoicing in heaven. There's celebration in heaven. I think it might even be loud in heaven. The Bible tells us that before the throne of God, there's angels whose job it is, all 24 hours, is to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. I mean, that's pretty awesome when you have your own angels just 24 hours just praising and worshiping you. So we got to get used to it. Might as well worship the Lord. You guys, let's, let's do that again one more time. Let's enter in and just experience God, experience that, that pouring out of his power and his spirit to, to energize us. I love it. I love it. And you know what? I'll tell you more than that. The Lord loves it. When his people just worship him with abandon arms lifted or however how you worship and you know what for some of you the, the, the enemy like Justin was saying will come to you and he'll just kind of start whispering but, but 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 you did that how dare you stand up and worship man it used to happen to me all the time all the time so finally I started reminding the devil of who I am because I come in the name of Jesus Christ not in my own flesh, not in my own goodness, not by my experiences, but I come, like Justin said, by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only way you can enter into the tabernacle is through the blood. 
through the sacrificial blood of the Lamb, and then we enter in to the presence of God. Let's enter in once again. stuff, huh? God is good. And let me tell you, in, in the black church, they say, we just had church. We just had church. I don't know how many of you have visited the, the black Pentecostal churches. I kind of grew up in 
something very similar to that. And uh, they, they know how to celebrate. They know how to just to enjoy, you know, uh, church. But, um, hey, great to have you guys here. Welcome to our visitors. Uh, who's, who's here for the first time today? Anybody? Awesome. Great to have you guys. Welcome. And it's great to see our, our church family. Um, so the last few weeks, we've been going through the book of 1 Corinthians. We're going to continue in the book of 1 Corinthians. We're going to want to open up to top chapter 12. Miss Sandra, are we having the ministry today? Yes. Great. So we are having youth ministry today. So if there's any youth or if you want to bring your youth next week, Miss Sandra will, will, uh, does ministry for them. Uh, I always ask her because I, I try to remember to ask her because uh, when we have youth ministry, we want to make sure we have at least more than one child so they can gather together. So last few weeks, we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 as we, we're back in our verse-by-verse, chapter-by-chapter study in the book of 1 Corinthians. We looked at the fact that last week that we were linked together. So if you didn't get one of these last week, make sure you get one from uh, Nicole at the connection. There's a few more left. We talked about the very important fact that, that we're, you know, we're connected to each other. We're linked together as a body of Christ. This is what Paul has been talking about, that Not only are we linked together, but that God has gifted us with gifts so we can be functional within the body of Christ. We looked at that last week, and uh, today we're going to continue in that same um, that same theme. Look at me with uh, at 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 First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse. We'll start at verse fifteen. Give me a second here while I start the, the timer. All right, 1 Corinthians 12, 15 through verse 20. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body. It is therefore not, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, am I not of the body? Is there therefore, is, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing if the whole were If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. Lord, we ask your blessing upon your word that you would speak to us, Lord through your word, by your Holy Spirit, that you would give us ears to hear what the Spirit would say. Because, we, Lord, we, we believe you want to speak to us individually. And so, Lord, we're, we're listening. We want to hear spiritually what, how to apply these words to our lives. And we ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you had to choose what part of the body you could be, I know you probably, this is how I think. This is really weird. What part of the body would you be? The hand? The foot? The legs? For sure not the nose. Because you're always getting picked on. <laughs> right? <laughs> or you wouldn't want to be the feet. The feet, because who wants to be the feet, right? I mean, the feet are I mean, just kind of gross. I won't go there. But if you were the feet, you'd always be defeated. So much so you may even lose your soul. (laughs) Let's just wrap it up. (laughs) I thought it was funny when I wrote it. But but, but, but wait, can you imagine not having feet? I mean, you, you would be in trouble. You wouldn't be able to stand. You wouldn't be able to go exactly where you would want to go. Paul is saying here that the difference of appearance in the body of Christ, the difference in our function does not make you any better or any less important in the body. We all have a various function. Remember last week we were talking about the gifting, so we've been gifted by the Holy Spirit to be a a part of the body, a functioning part of the body. And when we're not functioning properly, we're dysfunctional. And that's why you go to many churches or in many families and many faith experiences, and we have dysfunction. 
because we are not acting properly or functioning as the Lord has empowered us to do so. First, let me say that no one should feel excluded from the body of Christ because they function differently than somebody else. Because we all have different gifts. That's the beauty, the beauty of our body. Many members, one body. So Paul is using this, this illustration of the body to talk about the, the wonderful work of the spiritual body of Christ. Let's tackle this first thing, this one first. I appreciate the love and the honor that you guys give myself as pastor or Pastor Robert. I know I'm speaking for Pastor Robert and Tony too. And the Bible does say to acknowledge you know, those that work among you, and you guys do that, and we, we, it's a privilege to serve this church. But no, no man or no woman should be exalted above anybody else within the body. And the problem is, is that happens a lot in the church. There's, there's, there's this hierarchy where, oh, that person is elevated, and that person is, you know, down here. It should be. We're all the same. We work for the same benefit for the whole body. And when we exalt one person above the other, that's dysfunction. That's why I really, I reject personally. In fact, I loathe. I say this a lot. I say this every chance I get. I cannot stand when people call me reverend. Because only God's reverend. Only God is worthy to be exalted. I'm, I'm a slave. When it gets down to it, when it comes to ministry, ministers, that name in the original language is a servant, is a slave, a willing bond slave of the Lord. But yet, he's a minister. He's elevated. Well, how did that happen? That's not God's you know, purposes and plan for the ministry, Jesus, Jesus, the, 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 the great example of the greatest minister ever said that he, even Jesus Christ didn't come to be served, but to serve. He washed the disciples' feet, which was the lowest ranking, the, the lowest job of the lowest ranking servant to do. Not just a servant, the lowest servant in the house was to wash the feet. You can imagine why. Because back then in that, in, the, in that day and age, I don't know if he knew this, but the, the, the foot was con considered the, the, the dirtiest part of the body because many walked around barefooted. You think, our, you think our feet are bad nowadays? You know, they had pretty disgusting feet back then. But we all have a gifting. My gifting happens to be that as a pastor, teacher, but it's no better than your gifting. It's no better than the Sandra's with the children, with the youth, or the ladies with the children. It's all part of body function. In other words, you matter to the body of Christ. What your gifting and your function, what God has designed, the Bible, we read that he has set each and every one of you within the body of Christ. He puts you in the body of Christ for you to function as a part of that body. You matter to the body just as much as anybody else. To think otherwise is just as foolish as the foot or the ear saying, I don't want to be the foot anymore. I don't want to be the ear. No, 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 it's designed to be that way. Just because our giftings are different, because our function in our body is different, some lead, some teach, some, some worship, some you know, serve in, uh, thank God for the guys that clean up and tear down. Um, this place would be a mess. As soon as COVID happened, we doubled, our, we, we doubled our efforts, guys cleaning contact services. And I mean, you could come into this place and be confident that this person is wiped down and clean after every service. Thank God for those guys. How important is that, right? All for the purpose of the body. Verse 17, if the whole body were an eye, where would, where would be the hearing? The body can't work properly if all were the hands, could it? The body couldn't work properly if, if we were a big eye. Thinks, it makes me think of that, that movie, Monsters, Inc., remember? <laughs> Mike Wazowski. He was just that big eye. And it's kind of funny when you think about it, but 
But at the same time, it's kind of grotesque if the body of Christ was just, just one big member. But we're, Paul says we're many members. Jesus didn't want his church to look like a Mike Wazowski. Verse 18, but now God has set, look at that, has set the members, each one of them, each one of you as a member of the body of Christ. He has set them in the body just as he pleased. I mean, it's often times when you, when, when you think about our bodies and how God created our bodies, how amazingly wonderful our bodies are made. I mean, he could have put, you know, our hands where our feet are and our feet where our hands are. But, I mean, just everything works perfectly in unison, in function, for the benefit of the body. It's up to the designer. He has set everyone. He has designed each and every one of us to be a part, a various part of his body. So I can't say, well, look at me. I'm the hand. I get to handle things. You know, or look at me. I'm the elbow. Where would, your, where would your arm be or your hand be if I was the elbow? I can't take pride in, in the gifting or the function that God has given me because it's him that's given it to me. Each serves, each member serves at the pleasure of the designer. So you as a part of the body of Christ, you serve as, as to the pleasure of the designer. The question is, are you, are you doing that? The question is, are you, are you using the gifting that God has given you to function as the designer has created you to do so? That's where we start to fail. That's where we start to, to, to experience dysfunction. That's where we start to, to not feel fulfilled in our lives because we, we have this gifting by the Holy Spirit that we're not using for the Lord. And we become bummed out. We looked at that last week. Verses uh, 21 through 26. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which think to be less honorable, on those we bestow greater honor. And our unrepresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to the part which lacks it. Verse 25, that there should be no schism in the body, but that that the members should have the same care one for another. And if one member suffers, all members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. So Paul writes here to the church who are tempted, the church. Now remember, first, uh, the church at Corinth was a very young church. Remember, Christianity was very young. So they're trying to figure out this church thing and what church is supposed to look like and what being a Christian is supposed to look like. So, so Paul's writing them and telling them that you, you're not supposed to have a sense of superiority over one another because you speak in tongues or you exercise this gift or you have that gift. And you're not, that's not supposed to be there to make you feel or look better. Those members of the body which seem to be weaker, he says, are necessary. Even the ones that seem that they're not as important as your gift, maybe they don't have the speaking gift or the motivational gifts, but they have the other types of gifts, gifts of encouragement, gifts of, pro, you know, other types of gifts. He says, they're all necessary. There is no hierarchy in our physical bodies, and there should be no hierarchy in the church. Paul talks about those unpresentable parts. What he's talking about, though, there. And those, as those unpresentable parts are literally the vital organs. We tend to think that, we, we don't tend to think about our heart as on a daily basis, do we? We don't, we don't tend to think about, you know, our heart pumping and working. Like, I have to think about it for it to work. God forbid. Right? I have to think about my lungs to breathe in, inhale, exhale, you know. Because those things are far too important for God to put under our control so they happen automatically. 
our nervous system. We don't have to think about feeling pain. Am I feeling pain? Is this fire burning me or not? You know, God put those things there that with inside of us that we don't see, but they, those, those functions, although they're not visible, they're not presentable, they're not, they're not in the forefront, they're just as important. As a matter of fact, they're just as vital to our lives. We don't think about those things until there's a problem. We don't think about, you know, our kidneys until there's a problem. We don't think about those, those vital organs. Why? Because they're not in, in plain view like the other members of our body. That's what Paul is saying. Now, let me explain it like this. This morning when you woke up, you didn't, you didn't necessarily think about how many beats per minute your heart was going to beat. You weren't so much worried about the capa- air capacity of your lungs or your pulse ox. But you were thinking about your teeth. Got to brush those babies. Right? You're thinking about your hair or the lack of it in some of our cases. <laughs> some of you ladies are looking at your nails and thinking, I got to get my nails done. Some of us are thinking about our wrinkles and our, you know, our skin. And thinking, I'm looking older. And so we spent so much more time with those presentable parts. But you know what? I don't need to live with, I don't need to have a hand. I don't need to have hair. I don't need to have those things. Those things aren't as necessary, Paul is saying. But the things that are more necessary, things that we don't take care of as, or, or aren't as visible or aren't as front and center. So we spend more time with the visible. So here in the church, we look to the ones who do the worshiping, who are the ones who are front and center, the speaking, those that are, those that are doing the, the outward, visible, more presentable ministries. But all the ministries work together for the body, as I mentioned earlier, the Sunday school. God bless those teachers. I love the faithfulness of those teachers, the same teachers that we've had for the past eight years, pouring into loving those kids. How vital is that? Here in the body of Christ, when you look at someone who, like, for instance, I've always, I've always said this, I've always thought this, I don't know if, if I've heard this before, but it, I, it resonates with me. Oftentimes when, uh, you know, the, I, was, I was saying earlier, pastors get the accolades because we get to be front and center. And it's, like I said, it's a privilege. I don't deny that. It is a privilege. But um, when we get to heaven, I believe the, the, the guys like me, Pastor Robert and Tony, the, guy, the other pastors on, on the churches in the area, I believe because we, we had the, we, we got the honor and we got, we got to speak for the body. I believe we're going to be somewhere in the back of heaven, the back row. And then the front row is going to be that precious widow who prayed for the church. That precious single mom who struggles with getting her kids ready, struggles financially, but she's faithful to raise them in the ways of the Lord. Or that, that one Christian who has depression and finds it so hard to get out of bed. But yet they get out of bed and they, they come to church and they serve and they have a smile and they're going to be front and center. It's going to be the ones that served and loved the children. So when you guys are, when we're in heaven, and you guys are front and center, just wave, wave, wave in the back. I'll be way back there, see? But, but because of the, our humanity, we, we, we tend to think of those or not think of them at all when they're just as vital, just as important to the body, just as valuable to the body than those who get more attention. That's what Paul is saying. Remember, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Verse 25, that there should be no schism in the body. There's no reason, reason to think that we're better or that we're lesser in the body of Christ. Can you imagine if your hand refused to function as your hand? I mean, it, it happens in the body sometimes due to disease or whatever. But with, can you imagine, I mean, by the way, did, you, did most of you, do you know that most of you took a weapon in your hand either this morning 
or yesterday at dinner, as your hand went and grabbed that fork and you stabbed it into a piece of meat and at breakneck speed it came thrusting toward your mouth? What if at that second the hand said, you know what, I'm done with this, man. I don't want to do this anymore. And just start to stab in your eye. <laughs> it sounds funny, doesn't it? But it happens all the time in the church. When people say, you know, I don't want to be a part of that anymore. And I'm going to do my own thing. And the Bible says, you know, lean not unto your understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge, you know, acknowledge the Lord. And he'll lead you. Oftentimes, we tend to do our own thing. That's why Paul says, don't let there be any schisms. That's what he's, we just read right there. Look at that. The, that. Verse 25, that there should not be schism within the body. What he's talking about is lit literally that you shouldn't be amputated from the body. Schism, separated, separation from one another. Because body ministry is so important. Paul's talking about those who have amputated themselves from the body. When it's our human tendency to isolate, for sure. We all do it. When we, all, when we struggle, we push others away. We sometimes we'll push, push the church away. But Paul is saying, don't do that because you matter. You matter to the body. Your gifting is needed. And you need the gifting of others. I think that's really important understand that your gifting matters but you receiving the gifting of others the gift of encouragement the gift of 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 teaching the gift of of of, of loving the gift of, of 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 prophecy speaking the word of god to one another the gift of um grace and compassion all those things. If you're not here to be connected to those things, you're missing out on those things. And if you're not here to participate and to, and, and to use your gifting to, to somebody else, then you're, you're, that piece of the puzzle is, is missing. You're a vital piece to the puzzle of the body of Christ. Or as Paul said, the, the, a vital piece, a vital, a vital part of the member of the, bodies of, of, of the body of Christ. You're important to the body. You're vital to the whole body. And when you're not here, when you're supposed to be functioning as part of the body of Christ, there's dysfunction. Verse 25 continued that the members should have the same care one for another. So we, we come when we gather, we're part of the body of Christ, and we care for one another. We exercise, again, the gifting to uplift each other. That's where we see the parts of the body working together in unison for the benefit of one another. The eyes and the ears do not serve themselves only, but the whole body. The, the nourishment that we receive from our hands working in unison with our mouth, but the whole body is nourished. The heart does not only supply blood for itself, but to our extremities and oxygen to our brains so we could think clearly. Sometimes within our bodies, there is examples of our body when it tends to live for itself. When our body doesn't contribute anything to the rest of, of the body. When the body feeds and grows only for itself, there's a term, a medical term for it. It's called cancer. It's the most selfish thing in your body because it only lives for itself at the sake, at the sake of, the other, uh, of the other members. And, it, and, and it's a killer. Verse 26, and if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. And if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. I love that. Showing compassion and concern to our fellow members. But somehow, some way in this American church that we, that we have and that we do, we don't do that. Right? Sometimes, and I have found, and people have brought this to my attention, that church can be the loneliest place for some people. 
That's why some le- will gravitate to the bars or they'll gravitate to their homies after work or that, uh, what do they call it, uh, after work, that big, the big lie, I call it the big lie after work is happy hour, right? Ain't nobody happy at happy hour, let me tell you, especially after happy hour. But it's sad because in the church is supposed to be that place where we lift each other up, where we help each other. Where we, sh- it, we express compassion and we serve one another. Where we're to be in- involved with one another. That when you hurt, I hurt. When, when, when you are rejoicing, I'm rejoicing. And that when you win the lottery, I win the lottery. <laughs> like we said last week, we're all connected to each other. That's the idea of what Paul is saying here in in just a few words. We're all connected. We impact one another. The Lord gave me this this morning. You know the old saying, a chain is no stronger than its weakest link. But the Lord showed me this. In the church, no link is weaker than its strongest link. And that's Jesus. Right? Because we're not as strong as we want to be. But none of us are as weak as our strongest link. And that link is the Lord Jesus Christ. When we're connected, when we're connected to him by the Spirit, and we're connected to one another. Let me tell you, there's a reason why the early church called each other brother and sister. Because they were. They literally were. Put yourself in their sandals, man. Back in the early church, when you became a Christian, you left your, your family didn't talk to you. You couldn't go out in public. If, as a matter of fact, you put your life in other Christians' hands to survive. You would lose your job. You would lose your livelihood. And so you had to come together to the body to help each other, to benefit each other, to, to provide for each other. And because of that, they were super impactful. You see, the, when the Holy Spirit flows, which is the source of our power, the source of our strength in the Holy Spirit, but when we're disconnected, we're not an accurate conduit of the Holy Spirit. That's why it's so important that Paul is saying here that we are members of one another so we can flow, the Holy Spirit can flow like the blood in our bodies. But if I'm amputated... I'm not getting the flow of the blood. And if you're not part of the church, you're not getting the flow of the Holy Spirit. You'll get Holy Spirit, but it's designed for you to live off of the body ministry. We'll look at that in a second. But one of the ways that we grow in the Lord is by growing in fellowship. Connecting with one another through the strongest link, our commonality in Christ. That is the center. It's unfortunate that so many times here in church, you know, after church, I, I, I always observe those that leave right after church. And it's almost like there's a noise. It goes pew! Pew, 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 pew! And in my mind, because I'm, I'm funny this way, I just, I think it's like, it's almost like a, in almost every church, it's almost like a race. Who can get out the fastest? <laughs> right? Pastor, don't come and talk to me, right? I don't want to connect with anybody. I just want to go to church and leave. That's the American church for you. That's what I call easy beliefism. But that's not doing church the way the Bible says. That's not being the body. And that's why so many Christians find themselves lacking because part of our faith is our relationship to Jesus Christ and then our relationship to one another. It's all about relationship. Remember that. That that's I don't know where that I heard that from or where I got that from, but it's it's anointed. It is all about relationship. Our relationship with Jesus Christ and our relationship with one another. A lot of Christians stop at our relationship with Jesus Christ. And you know what? You'll get to heaven. That's, and and you, 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 you can experience life and, and goodness, and good, but you're not experiencing the fullness of the Christian life when you're not connected 
to fellowship, to the body. It's just, well, we'll look at the, what the scripture says. Look at um, Acts, turn with me there, Acts 2.42 through 47. I'm keeping my eye on the time here. By the way, whoever has the gifting of putting water here at the pulpit every Sunday, thank you. Pre- I don't know who it is. Pastor Robert, is that you? Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Acts 2, 42 through 47. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Why do you think we like to eat so much together when we get together as a church? This is, what, this is an example of what the church does. This is the church. They continued steadfastly. That's like daily, guys. Well, look at that in a second. In the, in the apostle, in the word, the apostles' doctrine, and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. If that's not highlighted in your Bible, it should be. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone has needed. So look at this, verse 46. Continuing every Sunday. Right? No. Continuing Sundays and Wednesdays, right? And faith house and worship night, right? No. What does it say? So continuing daily. Say it again. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from where? House to house. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church every Sunday, daily, those who were being saved. This is next level stuff here, guys. This is next level stuff. Some of you, you can't receive it. Some of you are like, not for me. I respect that and will continue to love you, but I vehemently disagree with you if that's your take. Because it's our humanity. We, we, <laughs> we're, we're brought up just to, <laughs> right there, buddy. I love, so some people would say, I love that six feet, you know, thing that we're supposed to be doing, right? I wish it was 20 feet. <laughs> and believe me, when I first came to faith, I wasn't that huggy, lovey guy either. I am now. Just come around me. I'm just giving you a big old hug, you know? I, I want to I show and share love. I love to hug properly, you know? But this is next level stuff. This is, you need to take this home, Acts 2.42 through 47, and ask the Lord, what does this look like in my life here, Lord? Now, I understand we're not going to move in together, okay? That would be ugly. But, but they, essentially, they did because it was all for one and one for all. Because, again, to be a believer in those days was to put your own life at risk. So, so they... They, but, but the Bible says because of that, they had simplicity of heart. I mean, can you imagine if we were able to take all the rigmarole out of life and just love Jesus? Right? Take, you know, the, the fact that we have to go to work and all the other pressures and the re- responsibilities and all the things that we do. But rather, we all moved in here together. Can we do that? Right? And bring in all our riches and put it all into one pot. And we just lived for the Lord and for one another. We can hang all our clothes right here. I can see it now, you know. <laughs> but how simple that is, right? How simple that is. Every day we just live for the Lord. Every day we just live for each other. Every day we cook common food. We share everything. How simple. Now, I know that that's not practical in today's life, but, but that's the idea of body. We're connected to one another. Many members, but one body. The early church depended on each other for their lives. Daily, they met at the temple, house to house, meeting each other's needs, sharing food. 
You know, it's still like that today in two places. It's like that today in China and in the Muslim countries for the Christians. Because for them to practice and preach their faith, it has to be under great threat of death. And therefore, they live like this, Acts 2.42 church. They meet under ex- and exist under extreme penalty of prison and death. Therefore, they support, they, they support each other. They help each other. They live together. They're extremely connected. And their lives depend upon one another. And then guess what? As a result of that, as a result of that living, these churches are busting out. They can't keep people away. The church, the Christian church in China and in the Muslim countries under extreme persecution is growing gangbusters. They're thriving. They're in revival. But the American church, lethargic. Not all churches. I'm talking about the big church here, guys. There are many churches that have power and that are experiencing revival. But as a whole, the American church is struggling because of this American easy beliefism. Our heritage, our foundation of faith has led to, you know, a lack of commitment to the Lord's church. And we talked about this a few weeks ago. How important is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ? He established it. It's his church. We're not talking about religion. We're not talking about denominations. We're not talking about organizations. We're talking about the church of Jesus Christ. That he says, I died for that church. But we don't value that as an, Amer- as an American society. But take it away. But take it away. Bring persecution, the church will start to thrive again. I've said it before, and I feel bad for saying it, but I believe it. Another 911, churches will be packed. Another eight point earthquake, the churches will be packed. But then after a couple of weeks, it subsides again, and then we're off the hook. It's sad that it's that way. The, the, there's the understanding that there's the need. But it doesn't, there's, the follow-through isn't there. Church, if we're going to experience next-level living, if we're going to experience revival, and I believe you do, if we're going to see our churches packed and overflowing with new believers, it's going to happen with our relationship with Jesus Christ and our relationship with one another. Let me, let me prove it to you. John 13, 34. Jesus said this. John 13, 34. Another one of those scriptures worthy of your highlighter. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another commandment from the Lord, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. It's all about relationship, my brothers, my sisters. It's all about relationship. Loving Jesus. Having a relationship with him. Knowing him leads to loving each other. So many Christians will come up to me and they'll say, I don't feel a sense of power. I, I, don't, I, I don't feel like I'm, I'm, I'm struggling in my Christian faith and I'm not experiencing all that. No, you, many Christians aren't. Because they got the love Jesus thing down pretty good. But that needs to lead, lead you to loving others. That's the second piece. Jesus says, it's a new commandment that I give to you, that you love one another. You can't do that until you love him first, have relationship with him. Then 
with one another. And then he says in verse 35, by this the world all will know that you are my disciples if you have a love one for another. Man, when the love is flowing in this place, we won't be able to stop them from coming in. We're going to have to go to another service. How many want to go to another service? I do. Just two of you, but us three will do it. Four. <laughs> Five. Do I hear six? <laughs> Here's the deal. Numbers matter. Numbers have nothing to do with offering. It has, to, it has everything to do with salvation. I believe, as many of you do believe, that we're living in the last days. Paul says, and if you come to our Revelation study, you'll be encouraged in this, this Wednesday. Awesome study. Awesome word of God. If you know the times that we live in, and you understand that there's doom coming out in this world. Doom is coming to this world. This world will be destroyed in this coming great tribulation to come. Church is going to be gone, hopefully, with the help of the Lord. But there is doom that is going to come to this world. Many are experiencing darkness even in these days that we live. And it's only going to get darker before it gets better. If you're a study of the book of Revelation, you know this. That's why Paul says, knowing the terror of the Lord to come, we persuade men. We persuade people, come. Come to the Dodger Day. Come to the men's, the Father's Day. Come to the women's retreat. Come to the, why do we do these little events that seem insignificant? Have the pot, because we want to bring people so they can experience the love of fellowship and therefore experience the love of Jesus Christ. Knowing the terror of the Lord to come, you and I have this privilege of knowing the love of Jesus Christ. How can we not pour it out upon others? That's why this church needs to grow. It's all in or nothing. It's all in or nothing. We're living in a day. I, I wish I could just pull the veneer down so you can see. We're living in a time in a day where people are hurting and lost and they need the love that you have to pour into their lives. We want to see this place full of people because Jesus loves people. That's the only purpose. We're not signing people up to belong to an organization. We're calling them to repentance and salvation in Jesus Christ. What could be better, guys? Let's be the church. Let's be in the church. And let's be the church. And let's love the Lord God Almighty with all our hearts, minds, and soul. Then, we love others. We show and we share the love of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for this encouragement from the Apostle Paul. We want to be that church, Lord. Many members, many functions, many giftings, one body. One body. And I pray for my brothers and my sisters here that you would just empower them by your Holy Spirit. That you, would, that you would allow them to connect with, with you first. First, it's Jesus and experiencing the love of Jesus Christ. And this morning, with every eye closed, every head bowed, I want to give you that opportunity. If you just, right where you're at, right where you're at, if you just sense, I need to, I need to have this relationship with Jesus that, we're, that we've been talking about. And you just sense your heart's kind of beating fast and you sense that pull of God? That's not me. That's the Lord. And that's the Holy Spirit. Would you just say, I want to experience that? Would you raise your hand? I want to experience the love, amen, the love of Jesus Christ in my life. Would you raise your hand? Anybody else? Would you raise your hand? Amen. 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 And amen. Anybody else? But what an opportunity. It's so important that we make that public confession, guys. You don't have to. You don't have to, but, the, but Jesus says, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. Would you make that public confession and say, you know what? That's me. Anybody else? I want to pray for you right where you're at. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord, the Lord is pouring out his love 
right now by his spirit. Father, I pray for these that raise their hands. You know them. You brought them to this place to experience the outpouring of your love, to bring them in and connect them to your body. No longer amputated, no longer disconnected, Lord, but connected to you and through you, Lord, connected to that body. So I pray for them right now. And those of you that prayed, I want you to just pray this prayer with me as you're seated. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. And I ask you, God, to forgive me of my sin, my wrongdoing, my selfishness, Lord. And I, I do my best to turn from those things to follow you. I believe in you, Lord. Receive me as your child. Pour your love into me. Empower me with your Holy Spirit so I can live for you and make me your child. And I, make, I pray that prayer in Jesus' name. And for those of you that prayed that prayer and you meant it, the second part, there's, there's, there's one more piece, there's one more component that you need to do is follow. Just follow Jesus. And he will lead you to those places where you will experience his goodness and his grace. In Jesus' name, amen.
One more time. Pastor Charlie was saying, let's use our gift to serve our God. Let's meet corporate, just on Sundays or Wednesdays, every day. And as, as Paul says, so we can care for one another, right? We need to be connected to Jesus. That's how we do that on a daily basis. So before I pray for the offering, I just want to remind everyone, let's not forget to to give our tithe and our offering. In a few minutes, I'll explain the few ways you can do it for everyone watching at home. And just to let everyone know and remind everyone to keep everyone safe, we're going to keep on doing the offering here as we've been doing where two ushers uh, will be at the door. So just pay them a visit. Uh, today, it'll be me and, and Brother Tony. Pay us a visit at the front door. You can drop your offering with us before you leave. And if you want a fellowship, the swing by. We'll be there for a few minutes. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and explain real quickly to everyone watching at home the three ways you can still do this. The first way is to simply mail your offering to P.O. Box 2771, Bassett, California, 91746. The second way is to simply text the word GIVE to 562-991-6966. Then the third and final way is to simply, if you're by the church, slip it through the door and then one of us from the service team will get to it as soon as we can. So with that, let's go ahead and pray for the offering. Let's bow. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this time, for your word. Uh, may, may these ancient scriptures be embedded in our hearts, in our minds, and we could take them out to that great mission field that you have provided. Lord, we all come into agreement this morning, Lord, and we thank you for the jobs, the merit increases, the promotions, Lord, that come from you. And we, we know it all, as the word says, all good things come from you. So we thank you for this gift, Heavenly Father. May we give with a joyous heart. May we give hilarious to your church for the furtherment of your kingdom. Heavenly Father, may these funds collected, may they multiply, bless the hand of uh, collects them and deposits them, Heavenly Father, them and their families. Give it to you now, Lord. In the power of the name of Christ Jesus, all of God's children say, Amen and Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up Nicole for the rest of the announcements. All right, good morning, church family. All right, so to get connected, I know we've been talking about that a lot the last couple of Sundays, to get connected first to CCNW and what's happening and what's going on, um, you can actually get in the know and get connected by simply texting the letters BLTN, put a space CCNW to the number 41411. And if you need any help setting that up on your phone, uh, we can help you at the connection desk right outside. And all that's going to do is each week you're going to get an electronic bulletin with all the events going on for CCNW. Also, if you're interested in Phil Led, um, that you would like to serve somehow at CCNW, uh, see us at the connection desk as well, and let's see if we can find a place for you. Uh, social media. Let's talk about social media. So help us get the word out with Je that Jesus saves. Check in, like on your Facebook post, comment. These. This is an easy way for us to make disciples. Um, so really using social media to get connected, get the word out, um, and post CCNW and all the things going on. 
Also, connection cards, if you received one today, um, if you could please fill that out. And you can actually give that to Yvette, who was greeting at the door today, and she'll take that connection card for you. And also, if you've been before but you never filled out a connection card, then you can pick one up at the connection desk and fill one of those out, and you can get the church text. That's outside of the bulletin that comes. Uh, Pastor Charlie might send out messages, things like that during the week to keep you connected as well, and so you want to receive those. So what we're going to do next is have Eileen come on up and share with you about our women's retreat. Good morning. Um, just want to let the ladies know that we are going to be having a women's retreat this year. Yay. Um, it'll be held on uh, the 27th and 28th. It's just a one night um, overnight stay. So we do have um, forms and registration that we're going to start taking. Um, it is going to be open to just our ladies here at the church um, for the next three weeks. And then after that, um, we will open it to um, other people from other churches. Um, but if uh, you want to bring your mom or your sister and you attend here, we're open to that. Um, we just want to give everybody an opportunity here first um, because I already have people asking from other churches. So um, we just want to invite everybody. And we really, ladies, we really want you to be able to come and be part of this. We're excited. And um, we're not going very far. We'll be in Seal Beach, but it'll be a nice time, and um, we look forward to it. So with that, um, we want to talk about VBS, and that Amanda will take that from here. Good morning. Got a little opening chime for me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we're having VBS, thank the Lord. Um, the young adults are actually going to be leading that, as you can see up on the um, your flyer. So it's going to be July 12th through the 16th, um, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Again, uh, the young adults will be leading um, alongside our um, children's ministry teachers, thank, thank God. Um, but yeah, it's going to be awesome. We haven't had it in a couple years, um, no really reason, but... Uh, I think now is the perfect time for the kids. You know, it's been such a long time since they've been in church, so we definitely want to be um, there for the community. So definitely invite, if you have children, that'd be awesome. Bring them, um, and we'd love to have them. We also have online registration, so if you want to go to our website, that's at the bottom, csoonerwhittier.net, you can go there, sign up. You can also um, just let us know if you're interested, and we can write your, you and your child's name down. So, yes, thank you. All right, and this Wednesday at 7, uh, come join us as we continue our overview of the book of Revelations 1 through 12 and getting everyone a chance to get caught up in this life-changing study. So if you've missed one or you've missed the entire study, no need to fret. Just show up this coming uh, Wednesday at 7, and we'll get you all caught up. Also, our men's weapon training is this Saturday, uh, June 19th. We'll be carpooling from the CCNW here in the parking lot. They'll be meeting, and then on their way to Apple Valley at 6 a.m., which is this coming Saturday, June 19th. Uh, today will be the last day to sign up. So you definitely, if you're on the list and you still need want to get somebody else on there, or if you're on there and you haven't um, put in for your registration fee, then definitely see us at the connection desk, and let's get that done because it's going to be a blast. No pun intended. I didn't write that joke. <laughs> that was Pastor Charlie. All right, so next Sunday is our Father's Day Luau. It will be a very special day. We're going to be honoring our dads, grandpas, and uncles. So make sure to invite your family, friends, neighbors. Uh, we'll be celebrating with a roasted pig and all of the fixings. So make sure to wear your Hawaiian shirts uh, to honor the dads. So it's definitely going to be an event. We're going to shut down the parking lot. We're going to be outside, and it's going to be a big event. So Faith House Night of Worship is coming up on Friday, June 25th. So come anytime between 7 and 9, and you'll be blessed. This is definitely next level stuff. As Pastor Charlie spoke today about next level, Faith House is definitely next level stuff. So young adults in the youth rummage sale is coming up um, Saturday the 26th from 7 to 2. So you can bring your donations to church next Sunday, this Sunday, whenever you have them, or Wednesday. Uh, talk to Justin or Amanda. Uh, this will help out our youth 
our young adults and our youth as they're going to be raising funds for Magic Mountain. I, I remember when I saw this and you said, bring your donations, and the first thing I thought about was those white elephant gifts. Anybody got any of those in their closet? <laughs> I'm just playing. I mean, or you had those buy one, get one, or the just in case, right? Let's, let's put it to use for a good cause, right? Uh, CCNW Dodger Day, Saturday, July 10th. So tickets are almost gone. Actually, there's really like I think a dozen left, if any, if that's if we even have that many left. So if, if you're definitely interested in getting to the Dodger Day, uh, please see us at the connection desk today so we can get you on the list and we can get that taken care of. Uh, also, our chapel store, uh, definitely want to encourage you there. We have dads and grads uh, gifts available. And as Pastor Charlie mentioned last week, it is 15% on dads and grads till next Sunday, which is Father's Day. Also, there is a uh, clearance shelf down there. So see Nancy and she can help you with all that. So do you have any questions regarding activities or need any church info or you simply want to connect? Uh, just check in with us at the connection point. And then I'm going to give it back over to Pastor Charlie to dismiss us. All right, before we dismiss, um, we have some news for you. Um, I'm going to ask Kiki and Odie to come on up, and then the brothers, as we're going to pray for them. Kiki uh, and Odie have been with us now, I think, a couple years, right? And they're always a blessing to us. We, we, just, we appreciate them. We love them. But the Lord is moving them on. So um, they're looking at moving to Montana, right? And uh, they have a daughter out there, and we're excited for them. But we just, they're, they're not leaving within the, uh, it's going to be a while before they leave, but we wanted to pray for them because um, there's a lot of things that need to come together in a move like that. So we want to just ask blessing upon them, give you guys a chance to say your goodbyes. Uh, we love you guys. We thank you for your ministry here, your hearts to serve. Um, the, w the Christmas isn't going to be the same without you, without the gifts that you give for the kids, and you serving here too, Kiki. You, you, you guys have been a blessing. Really appreciate your, your service, your love here. Let's give them, yeah. But as a pastor, it's, it's also a wonderful thing to be able to pray you out because it's a positive thing. It's growth. It's the Lord moving you on to, to new things, and, and we just pray that the Lord establish you where he moves. Let's pray for this. Would you want to extend a hand forward to this wonderful couple? Father, we thank you, Lord, for Kiki and Odie, Lord, and just um, their love that they brought in this place, their, their prayers, their support, their service here, God. And we pray, God, as they look at this new adventure for their lives. Um, I, I remember the time when you moved us to Washington for seven years and then brought us back, Lord, and, and it's, there's a lot of intrepidation in a big move. But, Lord, you're going to be with them every step of the way. And we pray, that God, that you give them traveling mercies, that, that all their, their, their home planning and that situation just works itself out. We just pray that you straighten their path, God, and keep your hand upon them, help them to get uh, uh, situated, and then um, you know, just draw them close to their family that's already there, plant them in a good church so they can grow and be a part of that church and that fellowship, Lord. So we ask you to bless Kiki and Odie in Jesus' name and continue to be with them, Lord. In Jesus' name, guide them and protect them, we ask you now. Amen. 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 Well, bless you guys. We love you. Thank you. All right. Let's pray. We'll be dismissed. Father, thank you, Lord, for another fantastic day um, together. This gathering is just... You love it. You love it, Lord. You love it when your people just come together in corporate worship, in body ministry, Lord. So we ask you, Lord, just to bless our goings and our comings, Lord, as we uh, leave this place, that we continue to be the church, that we continue to do ministry and, and are focused on, on your leading and your guidance for our lives, God. And then bring us, we, we turn us back here safely again, Lord, as we come back again and just to to get filled up and to, to receive from you, Lord. We ask you to bless your people now. Go before them. Cause your hand to be upon them in safety and their traveling, Lord. Bless their families. All that's concerning them today, Lord. Give your people that knowledge, that understanding that you are with them and that you go before them. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great rest of the Sunday, guys. Lord bless you.